Hello, crafty friends. This is the Paper Chef here. Welcome to this late night crafting session. If you're in the U.S., it's late night, but if you're somewhere else, hey, it might be morning, it might be afternoon. I hope you're watching me from around the world. In this crafting session, I'm going to show you how to create these note card holders. They're called night note card portfolios, or we can call them note card booklets. I'll show you what inspired my project. I'm going to show you what's inside this one later. This one doesn't have anything inside it. Okay, what I want to do is start with something that inspired me to make this. And then I'm going to show you loads of examples. And then I'm going to teach you how to make it. And we're going to go from there. We'll make a couple of them. All right, so I went on a swap to Maui I, as part of Stampin' Up's incentive trip. And one of the things I did is I swapped 3D items. And my 3D item was a mini, a mini paper pumpkin box created with the flowering cactus product medley. And I shared a video on, on my 3D swaps. Well, one of the swaps I got back really inspired me. It was this swap here. Well, all the swaps inspired me, but this one really inspired me. And I just looked at it and was like, this is so cool. Look what a great use of designer series paper. By the, by the way, this one is called hand pen designer series paper. This features the note cards, the three by five note cards that are in our annual catalog. Okay, so I thought this inspires me because look how cool this is with the way the paper is going and the, and the way that she decorated it. So I wrote to her, okay, her name is, let me just make sure I cover up the phone number here, but her name is Jackie Ross. And I said, oh, thank you for the instructions. I loved your, your swap. And she wrote me back and said, She's been using this idea for years. She doesn't know where it originally came from, but she's been using it for many years. And then I also showed my friend Sandra this project and she made it, Sandra Lowe. She's, um, she did a Facebook Live on it the other day. And, I, and she said that, you know, it revived her because she had done this, not revived her, revived the idea. She had done it many years ago as well. And she pulled out a PDF she had, which was similar to this, a little, little bit different, but similar. And she said, oh, I've been making them for years too, but I forgot about them. I'm so glad you showed me this because she kind of forgot she had this project. And then she made a video and had all kinds of different examples that I'm going to show you now. So, and gosh, I think I lost my voice talking so much, right? So anyway, that's what inspired me. I always have to give credit where credit is due. And then we don't know who the original person who came up with this was. What's the, the best part about this is this. Well, there's so many great things about it. One, it's so easy. Two, it doesn't use adhesive. Three, it features our beautiful designer series paper by Stampin' Up. And four, you could teach anybody to do this. I'm gonna show you what my seven-year-old nephew made today. I showed him how to make it. I had an extra scoreboard. This is gonna be the scoreboard I'm using. I'm using the Stampin' Up one. He made it exactly along with me using his own scoreboard and the measurements. He did all the folding. He did everything himself. And then he decorated it with stickers. So you can, and then my six-year-old niece, she, even, she did it even better. She started, I mean, not better than this. I mean, it's great just like this, but what I mean is better in that she even stamped it. He put his name on it with tape and colored it. So he, anybody could do this. My niece, my niece is in doing the mermaid one, and I think she wants to show it on my YouTube channel tomorrow. I think she hid it from me, but she wants to show it on my channel. I did this one with what's called Pattern Party Designer Series paper. I did this one with Beauty of the Earth. Beauty of the Earth is another paper that's 10% off. And once I teach you this, you're not going to be able to stop making them. Here's another one with Pattern Party, designer series paper. You can put things in the pockets, right? You can put things in these pockets. Now here's the tricky part. I tried to do it with this Sweet Stockings designer series paper and I thought, oh, surely I can figure out the pattern thing. So I did a lot of experimentation and you really can't use a paper that has a pattern going in one direction. It looks great on the outside, right? This is great, I got it to work. And I, I can even tell you how I got it to work, but the problem is, right? If you can get it to work on the outside, they're going to be upside down on the inside. You know, it took me a while to wrap my head around that idea, but that's the reason I'm not going to keep using the sweet stockings for this part. I did use sweet stockings for this one, right? But it, I used a piece that didn't matter which direction. So what I thought now to show you for this tutorial is I'm still going to use my sweet stockings elements to decorate it, meaning my bucket of crafty goodness, all the things you learned how to cut out in my last scan and cut tutorial. We could still use our sweet stockings crafty goodness right, to decorate with any papers. But what I'm going to do is use a paper that doesn't matter which direction I go in. And to do that, I decided to use this one because I have a pack of it here and it's called Painted Christmas. 
So that's the one I'm going to use for this project. And we're going to make a couple of these because I like to really teach you, you know, the concepts. So this is Painted Christmas. See how it doesn't matter which way it goes, right? So here, let me just grab a piece of this. We'll use a piece of this and then we'll maybe we'll get another one too. So what's great about Painted Christmas is almost, I think almost every sheet, yeah, it doesn't matter what, what direction it goes in because the patterns are all great in both directions. And so that's what I recommend. So here's another great one here. This is going to be it. This is the one we're using. So those two paste, those two pieces. But while I'm at it, you know, I always like to show you, and you're going to see my unboxing soon too, with the help of my niece and nephew, because they really want to go on YouTube. And I'm going to help them with me, assist me with the unboxing. Oh, this is a good one too. Okay, we might have to do three. But like I said, you can't stop doing them. Okay. Oh. All right. Four. <laughs> All right, I can't help myself. Let's let's move these off to the side. Now, we're not going to do this one because if we do this one from the Sweet Stockings bundle, you see what's going to happen. I can get the doggies to go up in one direction. You open it up. Now, you can, it's not that you can't cover this up, and when I probably will with embellishments, but I don't want to have to do any anything like that. And see, all the other papers went in a different direction. So I have these two packs out. All right, let's do this. Let's clear off my scoreboard and my bucket of crafty goodness. And it's called Simply Scored. This is a great thing to have and essential in your craft, crafting collection. So let's see. See if I can't move this camera a little bit. It's The reason you need this or something like this is just to be more professional with your scoring. And, and then you can sort of, you know, use a, I'm going to use a bone folder. You can use a spatula to burnish the edges. But my niece and nephew, just, they didn't do all that. They just used their hands. I didn't want to teach them about, well, I did have a spa, an extra spatula, but they just used their hands when they folded it. So it's a great thing for craft club or scouts or something. All right, let's see. I'm going to start with a piece that we're going to be able to see. This. Let's do something like this because with this pine cone, we could, pine cones, we could see the score lines easily and then I could kind of teach you better. You know, and so that, that'll work. And there's one, like I said, this one I did with the same paper, the Painted Christmas. This, this one here. I'll show you the stamps that I used too. All right, let's get the light as close as I can. Just We're just doing the best we can here. It's kind of like a makeshift crafting studio, which I'm using this summer. You need your scoring utensil. And on one side, there is a small side and the other side in this stylus type thing, it, there's a big side. Now this is good for making flowers and pushing down on things, but you want to use the small end when you're scoring paper. You see how the lines, the one thing that is can be confusing is this is a, a one, even though the one's above this part, that's actually seven eighths. The one is the big line. The two is the big line. Okay, now I gave my niece and nephew a, a different scoring board from a different brand that had the numbers right above the lines because it was just easier. I said, hey, right above the two and go down. And they were scoring with me at the same time, but I was using the Stampin' Up one, but I'm just letting you all know that, you know, about the Stampin' Up one. So we have to do, we have to score according to the directions we're going to score at the two inch mark. Okay, and, I'm, and by the way, it's a 12, I better take the bone folder out from under my paper. It's a two inch mark and it's a 12 by 12 piece of paper. And you always want to start out with a 12 by 12 piece of paper. You need that square. Now you're going to, this is going to be the seam of the, of the back, right? This is that half inch seam. So we're going to be going, we're going to be scoring five and three quarters inch. I've already memorized this because I made so many. Five and three quarters, right? And then we're going to score six and a quarter. Six and a quarter. And then we're going to go to the 10 inch mark. And we're going to score down. Oops, you see how I just got, I just jumped off my place there. All right, so 10 inch mark. Now you're going to turn the paper sideways. Okay, and you're going to score. And I'll have this in the description later. I just haven't had a chance to write it up yet. And I'll show you the paper I'm going off of too in a minute. So we're going to do two and a half. We're turning and we're doing two and a half. And believe me, I'm going to do a bunch of these. So don't worry. And you're going to get to see the whole thing in different angles and stuff like that. Two and a half and then eight and a quarter. So what you want to do is now, before we do the next step, you're going to turn your paper back the way it was at the beginning where we had the two inches on the one side and we, we, we scored at the two and the ten mark. And that's what you want to do is you want to fold those. I just, I'm going to just fold them inwards. Okay. So fold those inwards. 
See why you must have designer series paper for this, or at least a double-sided paper? You can't use one. We can't even, even my niece and nephew use double-sided paper. You have to have the pattern shown on both sides. I had other paper and I was thinking of practicing with it, but it would miss the entire point of this, which is actually really to have like double-sided paper. I see a lot of you coming in. I'm going to say hi to you guys in a minute. All right, so after we make this first one, I'll say hi to whoever's here joining me for this midnight crafting session or after midnight. So now what you do is now what I, this is what I did because it, the, the directions actually called for making triangles, but I thought when I tried to make those triangles on the sides up to the two inch mark, the, I, if I didn't fold this ahead of time, I wasn't getting the triangle straight at all. So that's why I went ahead and folded ahead of time. So what you want to do is you want to make four triangles. You want to make them on each edge. You want to make them right before the score line. The way you can make sure they're before the score line is just to fold them over right now. I just think that's easier. In other words, you know they're not hitting the score line. When you fold this over and you're not getting a big bulge there. Okay, we're going to do that to this side too. We're just going to fold this out and we're going to fold right before the score line so that it's not bulky and bulgy. And if, if it is, just kind of get your bone fold and push it out a little so that you still have room on that score line. Okay, and you want to fold this over. Okay, you're going to do that again on this side. Okay, I'm going to turn it around. And again, I'm using the side where we scored it too, and the two and the 10 inch mark. That's what I'm doing. I'm just folding in those triangles. Okay, now you're going to, you're going to just keep, just fold this in. Let me show you the whole thing we have so far. Okay, this is the whole thing so far. That's all we've done. It is so easy when you see the rest of this. You're just going to be like, what? How come I haven't done this before? That was the way I was thinking. You know how many paper crafts I do, right? And I'm like going, what? I can't believe I haven't done this before. All right, I'm going to flip it over. Okay, you're going to flip it over, and you're going to fold the, along that other score line, the one that you made that was vertical, right? And then we're going to turn it around. Hey, got someone from joining from Europe now. Okay, we're going to turn this around um, over here. And... Right, we're gonna score it that way. So now, all you have to do, there's no adhesive needed for this craft. You're gonna tuck in the small side to the big side. Small side to the big side. That's it. I'm not kidding, that's, that's all. That's, that's, that's all, folks, right? That's like a cartoon. We're gonna go, I'm gonna take this. This is the only last step, is just to just make the little booklet. Remember what we're doing here. We're making these, I'm making these. So right now, I'm just making the booklet. And that's it, and you're done. That's it. That's why I'm going to make a few of these while I'm talking. It's like unbelievably easy. Okay. And again, use the paper that doesn't matter which way you go. I'm thinking Christmas presents, craft fairs. I'm thinking um, just a showcasing designer series paper this way. Uh, customer appreciation, team gifts, surprise gifts. Um, I mean, pastor, gift for pastor, priest. Um, Thank teachers, teacher thank you gifts, make someone some cards in here, uh, tags for your friends so that they don't have to have tags, make tags for Christmas like they're not crafters maybe, and you fill this with tags so that they can put tags on things themselves, and that's it. Now that's the bottom, because that's the taller side's the bottom to hold the cards in there. See what I mean? Because this is, this is her example that I went off of, right? So the taller side holds the card in there. That's the note card that you decorate. You could put three note cards in each side, and it will not be too bulky. See, because there's only one card in there, so you can put three in each side, three envelopes. They're three by five. We sell the note cards and envelopes in your annual catalog. Voila. All right, let me say hi and let's make some more. And if you have any questions, I'll do it. I'll do it in a different angle, but we'll see. We can do this. Okay, Yvonne. Yvonne is saying, thanks for staying up late for us. And she loves this idea. Good. And Diane, hello again. And I got my regulars here, even my late night regulars. Well, it's easy for Nola because she's on the West Coast, right? So it's not as late. And hello from Virginia, Joyce from Virginia, and Nola and Geraldine C. C. California, awesome. And we have Jenny from the Netherlands, Carol from Minnesota, where she has rain. We're going to have a lot of rain here, too. I'm just going to get another one in here. I like this one so much, I want to do this one. And then I might do these others. We'll probably do one of yours. She has rain in Minnesota. All right, yeah, we're, we're fixing to have, you know, here. 
on the East Coast a tropical storm tomorrow. We've already had our warnings for it, so it's going to be like super rains and winds and everything. And that's why I'm thinking, hey, do a YouTube before my power goes out, because I am notorious for having my power go out. And, and who knows how long it comes back on, it takes to come back on. But I don't like to whine and complain. But okay, so we have to just go be happy for what we have, right? Okay, Carol from Minnesota, White Rabbit from New Zealand, Kay from Australia. This is cool. I have, I have friends from around the world. And Kay, you don't have to watch the replay because you know why? I'm going to do this all again. I'm just going to do it while I'm talking. You don't have to watch the replay. I'm doing two inches, five and three quarter inches, six and a quarter inches. Let me go over that five and three quarters again. So we have six. So we did two, five and three quarters, right? Six and a quarter and ten. Oops, I better watch what I'm doing, right? And ten. And then we're going to flip it sideways. So that's the one that's vertically. Now we're going to flip it sideways. Two and a half. Eight and a quarter. Bada boom. Flip it back. Fold it over. Okay, fold it over. Use your little bone folder or spatula. I'm just folding along the two inch line and 10 inch line, right? Now we have this. We're gonna make those four corners right up to where the score line is. And I hope you're grabbing your designer series paper and trying this because you're just gonna be like, oh. And I think the people you give this to will be also really happy with the pretty paper, because our pretty papers are so trendy. And they're things that people like. And the colors that people like, and the things that are in style. And we always follow Stampin' Up. When I say we, I'm an independent Stampin' Up demonstrator, and we do follow our trends. We follow industry trends and colorful trends. Okay, so I did that. I folded those in, right? You can just do that one, and that's why I'm making sure. See, that one's a little bit right now on the seam line because it got a little bulky there, but that's okay. I fix it. See, that's what you do. You fold them in. They're going to be hiding anyway, but what I'm doing is folding them in. Now, at this point, I will tell you because there's always variations of things. You can use glue for that part if you wanted to after you do the tucking part later. I mean, there's, there's part you can use glue on. And we can also use ribbon to help tie it shut. So anyway, turn it sideways. And I'm going to go ahead and fold these sides. I'm going to fold this in. Oops, wait. Maybe we want the other side. Sorry. I think I have to flip it over. Yes, we flip it over. I have to flip it over and fold it this way. Sorry. Flip it over. Fold it that way. Burnish the edges. Flip it over. Burnish the edges. Small side tucks into large side. No glue needed. But if you want to use glue, you can. And if you want to use ribbon to help tie it shut, you can. You could put ribbon all through this hole, right? Put the ribbon through the hole. But of course, I would, I would hear the ribbon a little bit. When you put it through the back hole, when I say the back hole, this whole thing's a big hole. Put the ribbon through there if you want. But adhere a little piece of ribbon. I mean, adhere it on the edges, right? With some stamp and seal because you don't want the ribbon to slide right, right the heck out, right? All right, so there's the outside. Now we just do last step, that seam. And we do the seam. Okay. And now we have, and that's the bottom. And see why you use paper that doesn't matter which way you go? It looks good no matter what. And we keep going. We're doing painted Christmas. By the way, if you just came in, this is painted Christmas. We're making note card folios, and we're just having fun. Crafting, late night crafting. Oh, wow, and lots are coming in. So we have Lori from Ohio, Maddie from Australia. Hello, April from Australia. So you've got a lot of Australians here today. And Vest, Vesti from the Netherlands, and Kelly from the Jersey Shore. Yes, hunkering down, or no, thundering there. I thought you said you're hunkering down too. Thundering there as well. Charlene from New Zealand. And Honeybee Stampin' Hive from Florida. Okay, this was the first one I said I was going to try. So let's, pry, let's put this paper there. So now, I just want to kind of, you know, going to show you. So the instructions, where are my instructions that I'm going by? Here we go. I'm going to stop and just show you what I'm doing. 
visually again, and then I'm gonna, so what I'm doing is two, right here. Let me put that closer. Two, five and a quarter, six and, I'm sorry, five and, I'm sorry, two, five and three quarters, right? Six and a quarter, that's a half inch between there. 10 inches, right? And then we turn the paper. That's the two and a half and eight. See, I think it's easier to do on a video. And I was glad to watch my friend Sandra do this because I said, oh, you saved me a lot of brain power. Because looking at that, it's a little intimidating when you look at handouts, I think. So what I'm doing, I'm just gonna, I like to show you different angles when I'm teaching. So, and besides my, my light is very weird in this room. So I'm doing two, right? This is the simply scored by stamping up five and three quarters. Down all the way down, six and a quarter. 10 inches. Just gotta make sure I get into the groove like the Madonna song. Get into the groove. There we go. 10, okay, now we're gonna flip it. There's the paper, see what I did? This one's easy to see the score lines on. That's actually why I picked that paper first, but then I got excited about that as other papers. And I'm turning it sideways and I'm doing two and a half. Two and a half. Eight and a quarter. Make sure you hold your make sure you hold your paper over here with your finger so it doesn't slip, right? You don't want the grooves to slip. Okay. You're gonna turn it back to this way. Fold them inwards. Get your bone folder or spatula. Fold it down, but not too far down, right? I mean, not too far over because you don't want to block that score line. I will show you what that looks like close up. But see, this is the reason I did that folding the side first. Let me show you that close up. See that? You don't want to get right on the, you want to get not bulkiness. You want that to be right before the score line where you fold it. And if you're not sure, you can even stand up your paper. That's kind of a little trick I sort of figured out as I was making so many of these. Yeah, and now my really little nephew saw his big brother and big sister make them, and now he's, so I gave him his own pack of stickers. And then, but then he, he started saying he wanted to make one, and I said I promised him tomorrow he can make one, and he hid his stickers and I guess some kind of secret spot so he, nobody would take them and he's gonna decorate his with stickers tomorrow if he wants one too. And I did some with the pro, with the paper called Follow Your Art, which is a nice little paper, a nice little retired paper, very colorful and arts and craftsy. I just wanna make sure that one was, that was a little bit, yep. All right, so that's it, so that's it. That's That was all the folding, I mean, that's all the scoring. Once you get this, you turn the whole thing over, flip it over and you fold along those other score lines that we made earlier, burnish it, burnish it, and then tuck the small end into the big end. See why it's fun to do Christmas in July. So the demonstrators, the Stampin' Up! demonstrators around the world, we were able on July 1st to order, to pre-order items from this holiday catalog. Yeah, they go together super fast. And so I'm excited because I'm going to be unboxing. It's probably going to take me more than one videos. I totally was out of control with my pre-order. I'm so excited about the new products. And I even had some new products and I still got excited about all the new products. I'm just going to do one as I'm talking. I don't know if this one's going to matter. This one does ma seem to matter which way it goes. It needs to go up. So it's only going to look right on the outside. So when, you, when, when I did the, the doggy one earlier, I'm not actually going to do this one now because I'm just going to wrap up and decorate. But see, when I did the doggy one, I made the doggy pattern back. I faced it down. Like I faced it upside down. Right? And so that's what I would do with this pattern. And then this pattern would end up on the outsides here. 
like facing up, but then the problem would be that that pattern would be upside down when you open it up, okay? So it's not really a problem, but I'm saying this one probably wouldn't work for that. You want to get paper that really doesn't matter which direction you go in. So now let's do some cute little decorating. We'll just do it. We can do it with, you know, so we just want whimsical, right? Whimsical, Christmassy. Well, we don't all want whimsical, but I want whimsical. I think he just looks so cute, these little guys. I think I forgot to erase them. If you know what I'm talking about, I did a pencil trick to get these to cut out with the scan and cut. This one still has his pencil marks. This little kitty doesn't. So he looks cute on there. The doggy looks cute on there because of the pine cones. So let's just see. Well, you have to, you know, you have to think about contrast. The doggy and the kitty would both look cute on there. Here, peace, love, joy, and the little bird. Here we go, something like that. There we go, that's our decoration. That's our design, okay? So that's our design and you just get some dimensionals and stick them on. Now it depends, do you want there to be a pocket? Do you wanna leave this open and put stuff in? Or if you don't wanna leave this open pocket, when I say open pocket, like out here, to put stuff in, then just go ahead and put a dimensional right on his tail. You know, so then he can't, then you can't put stuff in the pocket, right? You can put one on his tail and then put a couple on his front front side and then the little pocket shut there's no longer a way to put something in there but you can put stuff in all the other pockets right so that's what I did for this one I sort of I put dimensionals see so you can't really put anything in there because I put dimensionals behind there so oh Yvonne saying she should get her pre-order tomorrow yeah can you believe it we can, we're ready to like unbox already and then customers are going to be able to order so demonstrators worldwide were able to get the pre-order in July and then the rest customers on August 3rd can order these products that I'm showing you, except for this one's already available. The stamp set I used is available now because the stamp set I used is from the annual catalog, not from the holiday catalog. And it's called Inspired Thoughts. And I've been using it like over and over. Peace, love, joy. And this one I've been using over and over. Wishing you all the beautiful gifts of Christmas. And I use this one a lot. Thank you so much. It's a cling stamp set. See, cling. And it means that they, they're, they're like rubber, rubber stamps, not, not photopolymer. Okay, so those are the ones I've been using constantly. Here's my bucket of crafty goodness to show you what I mean. I make lots of these ahead of time. See, and I, then I just cut them out with the stitched, the different stitch shapes, see? And I stamp them in colors that are coordinate with the, the Christmas theme, like this is cherry cobbler. And that one was evening evergreen. And I'm not even sure what the painted Christmas colors are, but these are these seem to be matching well. I mean, it's probably on the back of the pack. I just didn't even bother looking. I know that these sweet stockings, animals, these cute little animals go really well with the sweet stockings DSP, but that DSP is not very suitable for making these little, these little folios because most of that paper has to go in a certain direction. I'm gonna kind of overlap this one a little bit like that, kind of so the little, the little flag part goes touching that little flap. There you go. And you got some, some of these I was using. These, these are just like the best kept secret. I kind of missed these the first couple times around and they are called elegant faceted gems. I just love these. And I love putting bling on everything. You, you guys probably know that I have to put three bling, three pieces of bling on everything. We'll do a big one and two small ones. Or it doesn't have to be three. I just kind of like odd numbers. So there you go. That's how to decorate it. And I'll show you what's in my, so this one we just made, how quickly we made it. This one we were just made. And this one, these were all painted Christmas. This was Beauty of the Earth, one of the DSPs on sale. This was Sweet Stockings. And this was painted Christmas with Sweet Stockings elements. Okay, so I didn't have anything in this one, but this one I did, I made a card and I wanted to just show you the card I made as a way to you know, wrap things up and make sure I didn't say miss anybody from, oh yeah, after Honeybee stamping, I didn't say hi to Lori and Dale from Florida. Oh, Dale, and you want a prize, which is cool. Your, your prize is gonna be coming soon from the host code, thank you. Yeah, they go together fast, that's what Yvonne's saying. And she's also saying she, her, yeah, UPS. Oh, she has almost has her pre-order, but UPS is holding it hostage, it looks like. And up late at night in Oklahoma, Maria. Hello, Maria and April. All right, here we go. 
Here's my little project. So what I did is I made a little card. This is smaller than the note card that the one that inspired me made. And this was the one. Wait, I wanted to also put my, I gotta put my nephews there. Where's the note card that I was inspired by? And I'm just gonna kind of compare this to the size of note card. I don't know. There's so many of these around my table right now. The one that I, the one with the, here it is, here it is, here it is. I'm just gonna show you the card I made is not the same size because I wanted a card to fit my little tag. So this is the card size card that fits, but I'm just gonna show you my card kind of as an, see, I made a really, I made a slim line card, a really slim card. Okay, so you could put a three by five note card or you could just do something like this. And so that's what I did. I made a really tiny card to put in there because I had some slim cards. And there we go. And I put a little tag and this is, this is another, so another sneak peek for you is this is the candy canes background stamp. Here's the background stamp colored in, you know, different colors like poppy prayed. Um, yeah, these are all poppy prayed and this is real red. And then this one is colored with cherry cobbler. So you can, you can just use different colors of red with this background stamp and it makes a really cool card. And see there's cherry cobbler in there. So that's why I put cherry cobbler on that. It's just a blank card, right? It's just a slim, a little slim card that I put in there. So that's, that's all you gotta do. And that's gonna be somebody's gift. And maybe some more, I'll put some more cards inside. Cause I do have a little, like a whole bunch of stuff to decorate the cards with using my bucket of crafty goodness, the stuff we cut out with our scan and cut. Okay, so use up that paper. Um, use up, remember that we have a sale. Not on the paper, like these aren't on sale because they're not even available to customers till August 3rd. And our sale will be over. But all these papers are on sale this month, 15% off. Pattern, well, not, not the pattern party, sorry. In the Wild is on sale. Pattern party is a host stamp. Bloom Where You're Planted. Tidings of Christmas is on sale because it's annual catalog. That's Tidings of Christmas. Beauty the Earth is on sale. In Good Taste is on sale. That's the In Good Taste. Pansy Petals is on sale. That's Pansy Petals. Hand Pen Designer Series Paper. That's the one in the front. Your Peach is on sale, 15% off. So is Sweet Symmetry. That's that one. So you mean, they're just unbelievable, all the papers we have. Okay, so they're all on sale. And then here's some sneak peeks of things from the holiday catalog. And I'll do the sneak peeks again as I do my unboxing. These are sneak peeks I made with products available to me, that have been available to me for a little while. All right, I hope you enjoyed that little tutorial. Hope you'll go try to make some of these portfolios yourself. And we'll see you soon with some New holiday catalog unboxing. Thank you for watching. This is the Papered Chef.